Don't forget to stick around through the end of the video for information on our Arrive Serpentor Arrive giveaway. Never underestimate a droid. At this point, one would think that was lesson number one at the Empire Employee Training Academy. We're given countless examples across basically any Star Wars tale from K2SO to BB-8 and the classic comedic duo of R2 and 3PO. Today's example is loader droid Ned B. In the Disney Plus series Kenobi, we find Ned B in a normal-seeming droid maintenance building appearing to be just another droid doing repetitive, mundane tasks that others don't want to do. But we are almost immediately made aware that there's more. Never underestimate a droid. Ned B is revealed to be working with the brave Taladurth, keeping watch over a safe house that allows Jedi to find safety. But Tala isn't the only brave one, as we later see stormtroopers enter the same maintenance building in search of fugitives, and of course, underestimating the droid right in front of them. Now, Ned can be seen by audiences as he slowly reaches and grabs a hammer, knowing he may be in for a fight. The stormtroopers underestimated the droid and the building, and soon leave. Ned B later finds himself yet again squaring off against stormtroopers only this time in effort to directly help and save Tala, among others, sacrificing his life. Audiences only had a brief time to see Ned B in action, but in that short time we were able to see a character beyond a mindless robot, a character worth finding an attachment to. Well, the character may be gone, but we now have a chance to add him to our collections with the latest from Hasbro in the Black Series line. Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan, aka JK of JK Collects, and remember, I'll be posting new videos at least twice a week, if not more. And if that sounds of interest to you, please click that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. In this episode, we are taking a closer look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series, Ned B. Okay, everyone, welcome back, and here he is from the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, series, old Ned B, and he's a uh, plastic-free or windowless packaging. So let's flip around to the back and take a look. We've got our uh, our rendering of old Ned standing there nice and proud with this giant hammer, it's, you know, just beckoning a stormtrooper to challenge him. But, uh, you know, just the general same thing that we see on the back, and a little bit about the, uh, the series. Uh, and old Ned right there, there's a, a, a nice drawing of him. I always like seeing that artwork right there. Um, Curious whose arm that is. I like to see the, the other ones uh, side by side up against it to see what that mural works out to be. And then there is our uh, rendering yet again that shows everything that comes in the packaging and the plastic free packaging ad. Same with the top and bottom. And that's a big thank you to Target as always for that lovely little sticker. Uh, you know, at least they put it on the bottom this time and, and I think it kind of peels off fairly easily. But to those out there who are not willing to potentially trash their packaging, you know, uh, Target, again, please find another way. All right, so let's bust into this. Enough about that. Target's not listening to me, so i got this fun new way of opening things because uh, some were a little bit nervous about just having a blade, and I'm, I'm kind of excited about this, right? So it's kind of like a little pencil. So there we go. Got it open, and let's see if we can get old Ned out from the bottom. There's our pamphlet. just comes flying out. It's been a while since one just jumped out at me like that. All right, and there he is in our cardboard empty box. So we'll move the box out of the way because we don't need that anymore. And it looks like we've got Ned with his little feet sticking out and maybe one paper package of accessories. So let's see, let's just, I am still gentle even if I open these things. So yep, one paper and then Ned is just wrapped in here like it is his eternal sarcophagus. Look at this, I mean, they, they've, they've got him. We'll see if the feet bend enough to get underneath this uh if anybody's considering walking away with one from a store not that anybody would do that hopefully it, it's it's just complicated enough to where they would not be able to walk away with it because it is unfortunate that you wouldn't be able to tell right the package can be closed right back up and somebody can end up missing out because either it was swapped or removed entirely but there we go empty so one bag and one figure wrapped in the paper so let's see what we've got in the bag first and foremost we'll unroll it and it's got three little compartments look at that that's kind of fun it's a i have not seen this style yet i'm just going to tear it just to make it easier and faster and in here um, this looks like his little his backpack his power pack i'm assuming that might be uh because you know he's a loader droid he's got to be able to swing massive hammers and carry extremely heavy objects and fling stormtroopers all over the place so he can, you know, take their blasters. Uh, okay, 
All right, let's take a look at the uh, accoutrement that we have here. First and foremost, let's look at this little Ned B backpack. All right, I'm gonna bring the lights down just a little bit so we don't drown everything out. There we go, look at that thing, it's very cool, right? Uh, I like the wear that is painted on it that I can see immediately. Wear slash dirt, uh, it's hard to tell exactly what it's supposed to be. I'm assuming it looks like dirt, right? Maybe just rust, because uh, it's, it's kind of like a, a grayish, slight brown hue to it. Let's get it a little bit closer and let the focus work with us. Yeah, so it's got a little bit of a, a, a brownish, grayish hue to it. So it's definitely, it seems like it's intended to be rust, which is very neat, right? Because he was, he was a little worn down, a little rusty. They don't have a lot of money to keep these things maintained as far as paint, you know, and, and he's he's a hard working droid. The paint gets messed up all the time. Speaking of paint, looking pretty good, like the actual paint apps here, right? It, the, the blue here looks fairly centered, see, on the uh, on the pack itself. You know, if I kind of move it, you can kind of tell. Same thing here, even though it is a, a, a an odd, uncentered logo, this line here is fairly well centered, and that is also fairly well centered. Even with the rust, you can kind of tell, but this, this upward piece just kind of makes it look like it's a little bit off, but that is just the way that it's designed. Uh, along here, Fairly cleanly done, right? Um, it looks like, you know, pretty good. Uh, these these lines here, as long as they're supposed to be that color, everything looks very clean on old Ned. The gray didn't quite make it all the way down here on the yellow of this, uh, <laughs> you know, this handle. In case somebody needs to, to one hand to this gigantic droid. Uh, I would not want to meet the person that had the ability to do that. That's some power. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, it looks pretty cool. Very simple um, and very cleanly done. No major issues that stand out just by looking at it. You know, you have to look very close and that's what we kind of want to see. Uh, that's what we definitely want to see. What am I seeing kind of? Uh, one thing that I like here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the blasters. Look how glossy this thing is, right? This is kind of the thing that I would like to see with every uh, weapon, right? It, there's nothing really special going on here. There's not a lot of like the dry brushing I always ask for, but something about this finish adds a lot of depth to it you see it's got like a gunmetal color to it and that is i'm a big fan of this i would love to see more weapons get this treatment because it just gives it that sleeker look like it's properly oiled you know so it's taken care of you don't have that uh different uh matte and glossy finish of the cast plastic you just have the gloss of what looks like a very well taken care of uh stormtroopers rifle so very cool happy to see that uh you know I, I, I can't even say i wish it had a dry brush or something because that just looked fantastic but let's take a look at this hammer speaking of fantastic there's some really cool stuff going on here right so this is that that cast kind of metallic -y plastic going on here but look at the the end of the hammer see how they made it look like it was worn and used and it's even concave a little bit can you kind of see that so it looks like it's it's seen some miles you know it's not just a brand new looking accessory that was cast with perfect shape and perfect form but the head of this hammer has definitely seen some stuff maybe some stormtrooper helmets who knows um and then the rest of it you know with little details sculpted into this thing uh, there's always parts where it'd be neat to see different colors in there or just some uh some highlights but it's also in kind of like a, a dark gray not the same as the blaster the blaster is still a little bit darker but uh yeah i mean really well done the only thing I can see is on the handle, there's a little bit of bleed over on the black right there at that line. Whether it didn't make it fully to the point that it needed to, or there was just a, just looks like a little bit of a paint error, because some of it spilled over into the seam, and then some of it's a little bit short, and then we're back to that. But all in all, pretty darn cool little accessory with minimal paint issues. I, I, I'm definitely gonna give it a pass because of the, the that detail right there. To me, that's just awesome. That's just more than what was needed. And then we'll unwrap from the Star Wars paper. So there you go. Uh, it's gift season if you're seeing this at, uh, at a current time of year. If, if you got a small gift for a Star Wars fan, there's you some tissue paper to wrap it in, okay? So thanks, Ned. Uh, always the giver, right? So let's uh, let's take a closer look at old Ned here. And uh, just looking at him straight up, and he's got the rust features on there that we saw on the pack. This guy just looks cool, uh, you know, and, and, and <laughs> without his pack, he kind of looks like he's got a little rough, uh, rough posture there. 
but with the pack, it just added a little bit something to it, you know? It, uh, it, it covers some of that art that's going on right there. Being a tall person, I feel that. I feel that arch uh, in the back. We do it all the time. Uh, we hunch over. But anyway, enough about us uh, <laughs> and the tall people. Uh, those of us out there but yeah you can kind of see the rust features to it uh that match the pack very cool i love the way that it's on here even a little bit more rust like along the body i guess they had a little bit more room to look this is kind of like little brush pieces there but then you've got a spattering uh where it was like sprayed on there or or just splattered and through here you know because you got the tiny little rust spots that are starting and they will spread and turn into things like this so that's that's really cool we got the wear on the paint right there okay but let's take a look at the figure himself and see what we have as far as functionality and flexibility. So the neck is separate from the torso. So we do have movement at the bottom and at the top, right? So the head is still on a ball up there. Maybe uh, maybe one of those dumbbell or barbells, whatever you want to call it. So it does have some side to side on its own, but then the neck also wants to take over and add some assistance to it. So I'm all for that. Uh, as far as when you are moving it, if you let go, you can see it kind of pops right back. So the neck adds a little bit, but Hey, every little bit helps, uh, up and down up, not going to be great, right? Because the bottom of the, the, the head immediately hits this back, uh, gigantic lats and neck that's going on back here. So as far as looking up, he can, he does look beyond the horizon, right? So that's straightforward. He does look up, just not much. Uh, and the same thing for down, we've got the front hitting this little spot right here on the neck. It's almost like they put that there so he couldn't look down. Only look as far down as you have to for what you're about to pick up, I guess. I don't know. Who knows why that's there? But uh, so that's, you know, th there's not a lot of movement in there is the, is the point being. And it also, with the shape of it, see how it's kind of an oblong uh, head shape. It does not want to turn without the neck to do the exorcist. But if the neck is included, we do have exorcist rotation on that. And it's just kind of cool looking down at it, right? It's a hard hat. Very neat, right? I, I didn't see that from above on the show. And just some of the features of this, this head. Look, I mean, we've got these pieces sticking out here of like a, a softer rubbery plastic so they don't get messed up so easily. The eyes, um, the little yellow circles, they seem to be very well painted and centered properly along with a decent amount of it so you don't really see that gray shining through that's painted on underneath it on the yellow but can you see really close up even in the yellow cast plastic there is there are dents and dings in there right just to show that this guy gets beat up by doing his job stuff just happens stuff probably falls who knows what all happens but you've got these dents and dings which subsequently lead to rust which is so neat because you see like a big uh cluster of dents and dings and then there's rust usually right there uh, around here on the back these little antenna um not not the best paint job on that right so there's a little bit of yellow underneath there but all in all i mean it's very cool um uh, and then let's check out some uh mobility here so yeah, the, yeah, a little better than i kind of thought it would be uh this shoulder panel is attached to uh up here all right, so up on the top of the, the, the lats, or not the lats, what am I thinking lats, the, the trapezius, uh, it's, it's attached here up at the top of the shoulder and the bottom of the trap. So there we go. It kind of can lift up laterally pretty well, uh, and that doesn't hinder it. Now the shoulder does have good rotation. Uh, we do not have a bicep tricep rotation. Very cool rust feature right there. We do have elbow rotation though on each side. So it tells me it's got, we've got pins sticking in. Uh, in both directions, but we do have, it's essentially a pinless elbow, which is easy to do because, you know, he's a droid and we've got this piece that can become that that sticks the pins in there. Now, mobility, eh, not so much, right? I don't really think he needs to flex. Uh, he's a droid, but, uh, you know, that's okay. And uh, let's see, do we have forearm can kind of bend a little bit? But we do have that forearm rotation, which is good. And then we have the wrist forward and backward and wrist rotation. But of course, the thumb is going to impact on this piece here, which is also very cool. You know, we've got the dents and dings and then the rust on there. And then the hands, uh, very neat looking hands. And they are set in like a grip pattern. I was kind of hoping that they might be articulated as well because it almost looked like it, but they're not. Uh, and then the other arm. Same thing that's going on as far as mobility and uh, this where it's blue over here with the control is white and without a control 
and then the hand is kind of a little bit more of a maybe slightly more open right this one seems like it's more for uh holding a, a hammer but this also kind of looks like a trigger finger uh more so than this one so very cool and uh mid torso slash lower uh lower rib cage of a droid. I don't know what you want to call that. Has good mobility there. So back pretty good, right? And uh, forward, not bad. And it's free moving, right? So it's not snapped in or dented or detented at any places. So it does have free movement and rotation. And we have pretty good stuff underneath here, right? The little droid features of that abdomen area. But if you tilt it back, it does go to that smooth. So the detail doesn't go all the way up there. And it's always a nice thing when you get to see that, like when they do add that little bit of detail, just in case you pose it where it's far back to give it that realism. It's just a nice little uh, added bonus to it. Uh, we do not have waist rotation, but we do have leg movement. Uh, and we've got these going on, right? So like the Stormtrooper thighs, I guess is the best thing I can call it, right? Because it's got this piece that goes up and it immediately impacts with the uh, this area, the, the external underwear area, the sides. Now they are flexible, but it's one of those things where you don't really want to flex it too much because you could cause damage. Uh, it will bend back, but you know, it, I just, I don't like testing stuff. And we do have upper thigh rotation, which helps, you know, when you're kind of trying to bend the leg forward or potentially backwards, uh, but it's more of like a back and to the side. So it does help, it does work, uh, but obviously these are gonna be a big hindrance in trying to lift the legs to the side. Uh, knee rotation, yes we have it because we got the same joints that we had for the elbow. Um, flexibility, not really. Ned's not limbering up for any races or runs or anything like that. He's a, he's a slow moving uh, droid and Ready to ready to fight whenever it needs to. Slowly, slowly grabs hammers and does stuff like that. Now the foot, forward and backwards, pretty good, right? And then, yep, he may be a robot, but he can still break that robo ankle. All right, so there we go. And uh, one thing here with these joints is to be careful and make sure that they are pointed directly. This one doesn't really seem to want to rotate, but the knee ones do. In case you see, right? So you can have it just kind of facing there, and uh, it breaks sideways. But yeah, just be mindful of where those are pointing and, you know, maybe they'll help with a little bit of flexibility and making sure that it's right. Okay, and we kind of looked at paint apps as we went through the whole thing, All right? So I kind of highlighted the rust and the little dents and dings in the yellow. Um, when the rest of the paint, nothing really stood out horribly. This is another one where it's got wear. So that goes to an advantage of the, the paint apps that are supposed to be in good shape, right? Now, this blue ring despite some rust being on it, it is done very well. Uh, a little wavy right back here, but the pack is probably gonna hide a good bit of that. This writing is very cleanly done, and down here we've got wear and beat, just kind of ripples and dents and dings on that. But uh, all in all, the lines on it look pretty good, like even around the edges, you know, and a lot of times that is an opportunity or an issue with some of these figures. So that was really well done, I'm happy to see that. Uh, even around on the back and then we got these little pieces here and there's even some rust done on the back Did this need to be done? Do we commonly see stuff like this skipped? Absolutely. So it's just it it is excellent to see this detail We've got dents and dings and a massive amount of rust back there, right? So I guess he's uh, sitting down a lot No rust on the back of the legs or really anywhere else but that point But it's nice that that point does exist like that maybe because it's probably gonna end up Not too far below the backpack. Oh and these little lines back here connect to the pack see that let me uh, let me do it on camera so we plug the pack in and these little lines that were hanging out the back plug into those holes that were on the pack which makes sense because if they're if it's there for power or what have you it's gonna need to connect to it some way right so there we go all right very cool and that is uh is ned b and i gotta say you know i, I almost did not get this one i almost canceled my pre-order uh, but then when Target said it had shipped, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna let it ride and I'm glad I did. He's a very cool looking droid uh, I enjoyed him a lot in the series and he uh, clearly stands very well on his own and we'll be right back with a 360 view of him And here is our Hasbro Star Wars Black Series 6 inch scale Ned B 
from the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, uh, fantastic series, and what a cool character to get added, right? He's just a loader droid with more, uh, you know what, more than meets the eye to old Ned B, but uh, there you have it. I think it's a great one. Definitely pick it up. The price point is a little high, I will say that, so if, you're some, if it's something you're comfortable with, go ahead and grab it. He's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Hey everyone, we are currently running our Arrive Serpentor Arrive giveaway where we are giving away one Hasbro G.I. Joe classified Serpentor with Air Chariot. All you have to do is comment on this video to be entered to win. Each video during the giveaway period will have a secret keyword shared within the video so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Because the first person to comment that keyword gets pinned to the top of the comments and gets two entries for that video. A special thank you goes out to all of you for making it possible for us to be able to already start giving back. Well, that'll about do it for us and Ned B. Thank you for checking us out and for joining us on this collecting journey, as always. And look for at least two new videos each week, if not more. And if you got something from today's episode and you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that like button. It would really help out the channel, and it truly would mean a lot to me personally. And if you'd like to see some more videos, there are a couple of quick links on your screen right now for you to check out. But no matter what, as always, thank you for taking the time. And remember, we are all in this world of collecting together. Let's look out for each other. Thanks.